After finishing the previous lecture, you should be able to go to this address http laravel.test and that's the default page of the Laravel framework. Now let's open the Visual Studio Code and open the, our Laravel project inside it. So press the open folder and locate the Laravel folder in which you have created the brand new Laravel project. Now the roots for our application can be found inside the roots folder webphp file. So let's open it. You can see that the Laravel already created one root for us. And the way we define roots is by using the static methods of the root object. So note that you didn't have to add a use statement for this root object. And this is because this file does not live on its own, it is being included inside Laravel. I will show you later where, so you don't really have to worry about that. And this object has a couple of useful methods and they correspond to the HTTP verbs. So the default is the get, but you can also use post or path, put or delete or any other HTTP verb out there. So get is typically used on the web to just fetch the data and the parameters of this static get method first is the address or the URL so you see that there is only slash so it is for the main page and the second parameter is the closure the closure is a function without a name so that's, on, that's the function that only lives in this context. So what I mean is you cannot call this function from any other place. It is being defined here and immediately called. And how that works is for this root, you have to call this function and it has to return some content and everything that this function will return is being rendered. Now you see that it has a return statement and it also calls a magic function called view. So this is not a PHP built-in function, it's a function that comes from Laravel framework and it is one of the so-called helper functions. We'll get to the helper functions later. For now you should just know that the view function responsibility is to find a template and templates are defined inside the resources views folder. So it tries to render a welcome template and you can see here on the left that there is a welcome.blade.php file. So you won't have to add this suffix to the template name, just the template name is enough. So let's open this template right now. And the blade PHP means that we'll be using a Laravel blade templating engine and it contains a lot of useful stuff to make composing templates easier. So that's the default template that is being created for us by Laravel. We'll, we will not go into details of what's inside here, that will be too much for now. But now let's just make a simple change and change the Laravel to Laravel course. Save the changes and now when you will go to the browser and refresh you can immediately see the change content. Now before we move even further I'd like you to know that I've prepared a repository on GitHub called Laravel Cheat Sheet and the link is included in this lecture and you can see all the options and code that we'll be using in this lecture and all the other lectures and you can uh, easily uh, find how to do a certain thing on this repository, repository so I invite you to check it out. Okay so let's go back to the Visual Studio Code and as I said everything what you will return from this function will be rendered. So if we comment out this view and just return the number, 
you can also see that this number is displayed so this function should return anything that should be displayed back to the user so let's re remove that now and bring it back to the view now we will remove this welcome blade template because it's not really useful for us so let's trash it and if you will try to see the page right now you see the error from the laravel that the view welcome was not found and it throws an exception that invalid argument exception view name not found so if you would try to render a view that doesn't exist you will see this error so now let's create our own template and call it home blade php and render, render it here. So as you remember, you don't have to add the blade PHP, just home. So right now it's working, but it is an empty template. So let's add some content into it. And maybe we can just display a header, welcome to Laravel. So this is working. We can even add some paragraphs saying this is the content of the main page. Save the changes and we get that. Now rendered. let's go back to the web PHP and try to create another route. And the route could be, for example, contact. and it should return another view called contact. So now our application has two routes and of course the contact template doesn't exist yet but before I will create it I will show you how we can list all the routes that are defined in our application. Of course now it is easy we can see that there are only two but if your application grows you will have to manage it somehow so open this terminal using terminal from view or you can just open the terminal window and type php artisan and you can see a list of all the possible commands that you can execute mind that you have to be inside the folder where your laravel application is but what interests us at the moment is php artisan root list. It allows you to see all the routes that are defined in your application, including the URI, the method, and how the action is defined. So now it shows closure, but there are also another ways to define routes, and we'll talk about them later. So just so you know, PHP Artisan is your friend. Okay, let's close it for now and add the contact template. So create a new file and call it contact blade PHP. Let's also create a template and maybe we can also add a header, contact and paragraph. Hello, this is contact. Save the changes and go back to the browser. Now you should be able to go to a page laravel.test slash contact and you can see your contact page. So now everything is fine. We have two pages, but now let's go back to these templates. You might notice that there is something repeating here. We, in both of these templates, we have the same chunk of the HTML which is being repeated. So that's probably not a very good idea and we would like to move it into a single file and only store the actual content of the templates inside them. Fortunately, the Laravel has a tool for that and it's called Layouts. So let's create our first layout inside a layout blade PHP file. Okay, so this will hold 
everything that we need to display on every page and those contact and home pages would only show the content that they need to, the content that actually changes between the pages. So let's save this now and now inside the contact template we'll remove all that parts that are now in the layout and we'll use a Laravel blade directive. So directive starts with the add sign and the directive we'll use is called extends. So here you'll have to type the layout template name that we extend. So in our case it is called layout, but it can be called differently. So in each individual template you can extend a different uh, layout. So let's copy that and do the same in our home page. Alright, so we have those two templates that should now extend a base layout. So let's see what do we have. So now on the contact page, if you will check the source, you can see that we have the content rendered on the top actually, instead of being rendered inside the body. So we have extended the layout and its content was being rendered, but that's not what we wanted. We wanted to tell it where the content should be exactly rendered. And we can achieve that using sections. Now sections are defined inside individual templates and you do that by using the section directive followed by the section name. So we'll call this section content and you have to end it with the end section directive. Now let's do the same with the home. So it's also the content section. And now see what happens when we refresh the document. So if you will check the source now you can see that actually nothing is being rendered and there is a reason for that inside the layout we need to add another directive called yield and yield is used to render a section so since we have created a content section that means we would like to use yield to echo everything that's part of this section and everything that's between those two tags will be rendered inside the layout. So save the changes everywhere and now refresh. So we can see the contact page, home page, uh, nothing much changed but when you will look at the source now you can see that everything is being rendered inside the body tag where we wanted that. Alright, I think that's enough for this lecture. Please continue to the next one where we will talk again about layouts, views, rendering data and configuring routes.